Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at inductors and DC circuits, so let's get started. Before we look at what an inductor actually is, we need to understand what is meant by electromagnetic induction. So consider a current carrying conductor, for example a wire, placed between the poles of a permanent magnet as shown below. So here we've got this permanent horseshoe magnet with our north pole there and our south pole there, and we've got this wire lying in the magnetic field, and this is connected to a microvoltmeter. It says that electromagnetic induction takes place when a moving or varying magnetic field cuts a conductor to create an electromotive force, i.e. an EMF across it. Remember electromotive force is the same as a voltage, so here we have our microvoltmeter that will pick up that EMF. Similarly, if a conductor is moved perpendicular to a magnetic field, it would generate an EMF across the conductor. The magnitude of the EMF will depend on the strength of the magnetic field, the length of wire cutting the magnetic field, and the speed of movement. The greater these are, the greater the induced EMF will be, and I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to demonstrate these effects. So looking at this similar setup here, we've got our voltmeter and our horseshoe magnet with a wire lying in the magnetic field between the north and south poles. You'll notice that when the wire is stationary, we don't get any voltage or EMF produced on the voltmeter. However, if I take the wire and I move it perpendicular to the magnetic field up and down, you'll notice we get a non-zero value on the voltmeter, i.e. we're getting a voltage or EMF generated here. You can also see electromagnetic induction with an isolated bar magnet and a coil of wire. So you'll see initially that I've got zero volts on the voltmeter meter, but if I take my magnet and pass it in and out of the coil of wire, then you'll see that I get a non-zero value on the voltmeter. And if it's just lying stationary inside the coil, we won't get any voltage, it needs to be moving in and out of the coil. And you should be able to see the greater the speed, the bigger the EMF or voltage on the voltmeter. If we now use a bigger and stronger magnet and do the same again, you'll notice we get larger values on the voltmeter, so we get a larger EMF produced. Going back to the smaller magnet now, but increasing the number of turns on the coil, you'll see we also get a similar effect with a larger value produced. And also by increasing the speed of movement of the magnet into and out of the coil, you'll see we get bigger values. Going back to the notes, it says that if the conductor moves parallel with the magnetic field or is stationary, there will be no EMF produced, and we just saw that. The varying magnetic field in the example above is physically changing, but the movement will also occur when a magnetic field is growing or collapsing. Electrical components called inductors make use of this principle. So here is what an inductor actually is. So an inductor consists of a coil of wire which is often wrapped around an iron core which increases its effectiveness, it increases something called its inductance. So here we've got a coil of wire and you'll notice that if it's wrapped around an iron core, we call it an iron cord inductor, and this is its circuit symbol, where the semicircular parts represent the coil, and the straight line represents the iron core. However, if there's no iron core for the inductor, then we simply call it an air cord inductor, which looks like this without the straight line. So you might see either of these in circuit diagrams containing inductors. Next we're going to look at the growth and decay of current in an inductive circuit, and this just means a circuit containing an inductor. So firstly it says to consider a simple DC circuit containing an iron cord inductor as shown below. So here we've got a switch, a 50 ohm resistor, an iron cord inductor, an ammeter, and a battery of 1.5 volts in series. It then says that when the switch is closed, the inductor will oppose the increasing current. This means the current will take time to reach its maximum value. So here we have a graph of current against time showing this growth of current. So the current will start at zero and will increase up to a maximum value, which we could find using I max equals Vs over R, i.e. this is just the Ohm's law equation V equals IR rearranged for the current I to get Vs over R, where Vs is the supply voltage of 1.5 volts and R the resistance of the resistor. So for an inductor with small inductance, it won't take very long to reach its maximum current, whereas for an inductor of larger inductance, it will take longer to reach a maximum current. When the switch is opened, however, the opposite will happen and the inductor will oppose the decreasing current, i.e. the inductor wants to try and stop the current from going down. This means the current will take time to decrease to zero amps. So again, we can plot this on a current against time graph and show the maximum current Vs over R decreasing down to zero over time. And you'll notice that for an inductor of small inductance, it takes a shorter time to decay to zero, whereas for an inductor of larger inductance, it takes a longer time to decay to zero. Stay tuned for the next theory video on back EMF and Lenz's law, where we explain why the current will take time to increase and decrease. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it, make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one, take care.